And without further ado, he is kind enough to join us. Let's go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to the one and only Arnold Allen. How are you, Arnold? Oh, what's up, mate? I'm all good. Yourself? Yeah, I'm all good. Where are you headed? Or where are you coming back from? I'm uh, I'm just sat in a car park somewhere. <laughs> you're just, you're just, just uh, soaking your sorrows. Just hanging out. <laughs> hanging out in the car park. All right. You know? Well, thank you for joining us. It's great to talk to you again. A uh, lot to talk to you about. It's great to have a catch up. A lot of people are really excited to hear from you. Uh, first things first, can you tell the public, Arnold, why we haven't seen you in action for so long? Yeah, uh, I broke my hand really bad in the last fight. And um, yeah, that's that's the reason. That's the main reason, really. And you needed surgery? Not well, I did. But so after the fight, the UFC gave me the option to go and sit with their doctors or like go out and eat pizza. And I took the option to go and eat pizza. Come on. And uh, by the time I got back to England, I had it scanned and then they misdiagnosed it. And it was, oh, it's a bit of bruising. It's okay. Give it some time. And then fast forward eight weeks later, I had another scan and they're like, oh no, it's broken in three places and it's got a ligament torn off and all this. And yeah, so just a long, long wait. So do you feel like you wasted time? Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. I'll be turning down the pizza next time. I'll be going to the doctors. <laughs> I can't even believe they gave you that option. Yeah. Well, yeah. To be fair. It's my fault for being a dummy, to be fair. And no, no one on your team said, you know what? Maybe we should go check out the hand instead of the pizza. I mean, you could have the pizza after the hand check. That's true. <laughs> yeah, well, I just thought I was going to, like, because I got the scan the next day anyway, but I think where it was still swollen and everything, they missed the breaks in my hand, so, yeah. But here's what it is. Okay, and which hand is it? It's the right hand? Left hand. Left, Left hand. hand. And is it still in a cast splint type of thing? No, it's all good. It's, uh, so, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm actually working with uh, Anthony Joshua's hand specialist. And uh, he's building me a plan to sort of get back to 100%. Because it's all like in the rehab stage now. Okay. I'm, uh, they, basically, they said it should be 100% by Christmas. But fingers crossed, stick to that. So, yeah. How's it feeling now? Yeah, it feels good now. I haven't hit anything without a splint hard in a long time. So, I don't know. should be good. Okay. I'm fit, though. You're fit. Yeah, I mean... Training. Well, let me tell you something, Arnold. Uh, I saw some video mm. footage of you, uh, courtesy of your Instagram feed. We have some of this footage right over here. This is when you had something on your hand. I mean, you were working hard. <laughs> I mean, you were very fit. Uh, we, mm. we even see Old Trafford over there um, hanging Trafford. out with you. Yeah, the man. And you're going, I mean, you look to be in tremendous shape, except you can't punch anything, I would imagine. That has to be frustrating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I've been, I, I can like, at this stage, I can spot a light and... Uh... My boxing coach, you know, I don't know if you know, but the boxers, they work on like the foam sticks and stuff. And yeah. I'm able to hit them, which is nice. So I keep my sort of reactions up and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's all good. Where are you when you're doing these workouts? Is that your backyard? Uh, I don't see which one you're posting, but if my dog's there, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the one you posted on your Instagram. Um, that okay. looks like a backyard, yeah, that's right? My, that's my dad's garden, yeah. Now, uh, does the dog, does Trafford the legend... Does he follow you like that every time you're working out? And does that get annoying? Because he's literally following you everywhere. Yeah. he. Well, he's an old man now. But when he was younger, he'd be like, right on it. You'd flip a tire. He'd have to make sure it didn't land on his head. Uh, I, I've seen all crazy stuff out there. My dad lifting lifting all sorts. My dog's trying to get under the bar. I'm freaking out. The dog's going to get crushed. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, 16 years, he hasn't been crushed. So he's doing good. Uh, in fact, I saw another picture on your Instagram where you're uh, you're you're lifting weights, and he's I mean you're yeah. doing like a squat thing over there, and he's like literally under your bum. Yeah, he loves he loves it. The dog loves the gym. I mean, we even got his uh, his paw prints are in the concrete. Wow. Can we get a little separation though? Like, don't you need a little space when you're doing stuff like that? Yeah, he's he's a hands-on coach. What can I say? <laughs> I love it. That guy's 16, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yes. How's his health? Uh, yeah, health-wise, he's good. He, his spirit is still there, but he's uh, physically, like, his, his body's coming towards the end of it. Oh, no. Yeah. But he's got more, like, he never shows any, any signs of sort of suffering or anything. He seems pretty, pretty happy. Yeah. 
You know, when you first told me about Trafford, uh, you know, I know about the connection between a dog and the owner. I mm-hmm. knew about it. I never experienced it. And my yeah. family got a dog around three and a half years ago, and I was very against the idea. It kind of just fell Already. into our lap. And now, I mean, uh, I consider the dog like my child. I, I, I can't imagine life without this dog. And so I get it. I, yeah. I really do get it. And I dread the day. They just become part of the family. It's amazing. They really do. Like mm-hmm. them sleeping on the kid's bed and cuddling. Like I just, I can't even imagine life without this dog. So uh, yeah. I, I get it now. Yeah. I really do get it. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. So you're back home in England. Any plans of going? Are you not? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm back in England. Okay. I'm on, uh, yeah, I'm back here. Now, are, are you going to go back to Montreal at some point or are you done with them? No, I'm never done with them. Uh, for as his family, try to start their family. But just uh, really, the point was just I can't train 100% in a minute. So I might as well be home with a family and all that stuff. And yeah. Did, did so, you, and I'm getting looked after pretty good here. So Okay. Because uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you have like a significant other over there in Montreal as well? Yeah, yeah. She's here. Oh, she, she went back with you? Yeah, she's in England with me. But she's a Montreal gal. Yeah, she is. You took her out of the greatest city in the world? It seems to be the thing to do. You come to Montreal, you take people away, <laughs> yeah. and you go back to your hometown for a bit. That's true. I, mean, <laughs> I think it was a bit of a shock to her being in uh, in my uh, little town. So, a little town of Felix, though. It's a bit different to Montreal. Yes, it is. I would imagine nothing like the great establishment known as uh, the Orange Julep over there in Felix. Nah, there's a... Uh, I love Felix, though. It's a nice little... Little town. It's just um, it's it's the best town, but it's just like the opportunities aren't there. Right. So it's just full of sort of old people that retired and moved to the seafront, which is nice because it's relaxed. But uh, for like a sort of young fire, it's not the best place to be. Right. And where's the closest? Like the closest big city is what? Um, Chelmsford, maybe London is probably the closest big city, really. Okay. Um. Yeah, you know, the, the, the orange julep slander is getting to be a bit much. Every time I mention it, I mean, you're just the first one to comment and say something. <laughs> uh, you know, I, we need to get you and GSP in a room and eat the, uh, the spaghetti and meat sauce once and for all. I was actually back there a yeah. couple months ago. I didn't even see it on the menu. Uh-huh. It's got to be like a secret thing that he gets. No, I've had it. I've had it there. Yeah, uh, yeah but did you have it with him? No, I didn't, but it was on his recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> How bad was it? How bad was it? I, you know what? So my my girlfriend, she's Italian, and she absolutely despises it. Yeah, I, I think she would break up with me if she saw me eating that. But I love it. I mean, it's, it's, Wait, you I love know it? I slandered it. You no, said... I know I slandered it. Okay. I slandered it. I felt bad after. I felt horrible after I ate it. But in the moment, in the moment. I felt great. Right. Okay. It was really nice. And then the next day, I was in a bad way. Right. Okay. Uh, well, GSP lives by it. He swears by it. Mm. Um, I feel like you are a forgotten man. Like I said, I feel like you're the Leon Edwards of the featherweight division here. Not enough people are mm. talking about you. Your last fight wasn't that long ago. It was April. Do you feel the same? <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, I've had a lot of setbacks and all that crap and momentum. I haven't capitalized on it. I haven't, I haven't knocked people out in fights where maybe I should have finished and yeah, I, I'm, I'm the only one to blame, I think. And fans have a short memory, don't they? Like they, they sort of remember the exciting stuff like that. No one sort of remembers the decision, guys. And I don't really talk crap about people, so I'm not out here shouting about how good I am. So no one's really, no one cares. Well, I don't know about that, but um, is it frustrating? <laughs> like when we're talking about the top dogs, we're talking about Giga and Ortega and Zombie still. Obviously, Yair. Yair was gone for two <laughs> years, and he gets a fight like Max Holloway in a main event. <laughs> Is that frustrating? Yeah, he's one of the most exciting. No, nah, not at all. Like he's he's one of the most exciting people to watch. Yeah, yeah. Giga has been busy as hell. Like he's fighting whoever and everyone, and, and he's exciting and he's finishing people. Uh, zombie, that that'd be. Yeah, a few, a few people keep suggesting that fight for me. To be fair, and I, I like that. I like that fight. In a perfect world, when do you think you return? Uh, perfect world. I mean, there's a show on my birthday. Funny enough. January twenty second. Oh my gosh! But that seems too soon, no? Yeah, it does. It does. I don't know. Maybe you never know. You can't even punch yet. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I know. I already know how to punch. Right, that's true. I don't need to learn to punch. That's true. I don't already do it. That's true. So you would like to fight that soon? I'd like to, but I don't know if it's wow. Well, see what the doctors say to that. But yeah, we'll see. I'm hearing rumblings of uh, maybe a March show in England. Have you heard the same? Yeah. Uh, was it the 19th? Yeah, something like that. 16, 19, whatever that Saturday is. Would you like to be in England yeah. or do you think it would be better for you to fight outside? Uh, my last few fights have been outside England. So it's always it's always the best fight in London for me, obviously. That's like the most local you can get for me. So, yeah, it is. It, like I fought in a John Jones on the car when he fought, uh, was it Santos? Mm. And that was a big pay-per-view. But for me, obviously, being English in London, I had a better atmosphere in London at the O2. Right. I think it's one of the best, one of the best sort of crowds there. One of the best. Well, I also feel like you come across like a star when you're fighting at home. The English fans are very loyal. And so they'll cheer for you and it translates into something on television. People are like, oh, this guy's a big yeah. deal. He's got a loyal following. I don't know. I took my girlfriend down the seafront one time. The first time she came here, and she she was thinking maybe I'm like a superstar in my town or something. Oh no! This guy come up to me asking for a picture, and like thinking, yeah, it looks good. And he uh, instead of calling me Arnold, he called me Alfie. He's like, oh, it's so nice to meet you, Alfie, and all that. I'm just like, oh man. She's like, oh yeah, you are big time. It's really like, this is not cool. Do you get recognized a lot in your small town? Nah, I. It's such a small town. Like, I know everyone. Like, right. everyone knows everyone. So it's not even like, you know, it's like I went to school with that person or something like that, you know? Who's a bigger deal in your town, you or Pacer? Pacer, 100%. Really? That's yeah. your father, Pacer. Yeah. When the all-time great name, yeah. Pacer Allen. I mean, you can't even yeah. get a better name than that. Yeah, like, yeah, like it, it, people always think it's a nickname. I still think it's a nickname. It doesn't make sense. Why is that your name? <laughs> Why is that his name? I don't know. You never asked I him? I don't know. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. That's strange. I would think that. How old are mm. you at this point? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You'd feel like it would, you know, come up in conversation. Uh, you posted a picture. I was wondering how he was looking these days. You know, pandemic. People let themselves go. I mean, look at that. We're showing oh, no. a picture right now of you two. What a fearsome duo this is. <laughs> you with the sledgehammer. He's holding Trafford. He looks like he's three hundred and fifty pounds, two percent body <laughs> fat. I mean, this man. He's unbelievable. With that body, yeah, is he still competing? He's at a no, no, no. He's not competing. No, no. He's he's still lifting, still training. He, he's competing with my brother. <laughs> so my older brother is is doing strong, man. My dad is basically trying to keep ahead of him as much as he can. Okay, but uh, yeah, is he but coaching he's him? Yeah, well, uh, not well as much as he can. My brother don't really listen, so okay, yeah. You, I, I think I kind of do the same thing when he gives me fight advice, though. So. Is he uh like is he competing now, your brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's competing in the uh, uh 105 kilo strongman. So not like the big big boys, but the one below. Okay. Is there money in that? I don't really. Not 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 at that level. No. Okay. Like, the world guys, I think there is, but I think most of them are making money off their YouTube channels and stuff now. To be honest. Really doing what like exercises mm. and stuff. Yeah, I see that like, uh, Eddie Hall on YouTube. He's so popular on his channel. You watch that? You like it, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely a fan of it. Yeah, I see. Uh, you went to an event recently. With yeah, the Giant Slide. I don't know. Yeah, Giant Slide. What's that? Hmm. It was uh, Britain's Strongest Man. Oh, which really? Is basically, the world's strongest man, obviously. Why? Because the Brits are always the best? Not always, but uh, well, the world's strongest man is, I guess. Well, not Marius Pujanowski. Tom Back in the day. Yeah, well, he's long retired. Yeah, well, in that world, but he's still an <laughs> active fighter. You see his knockout recently. Tremendous. <laughs> I feel like he's got to be yeah. your dad's favorite fighter, other than you, of course. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he's a fan of me. I think he likes the big knockout guys. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> your dad isn't a fan of you? No, he, he always gives, tells me I'm boring. He's like, oh, you should have took that guy out. Oh. He, you know, like the Just Bleed guy. That's yeah. my dad. The yeah. Just Bleed guy. That's him. Right. Like he's like, you know, like even if you lost that, you could have made it a bit more exciting. And I'm like, I won. I was like, well, what yeah. more do you want? I won. But yeah. Uh, do you think you'll ever be that guy? Day. Yeah, yeah. So we, I, with Faraz, we spoke about it because I complained about after a fight where I think I can't remember which fight it was. I said like, uh, 
I think I should have stepped up and took the guy out. I, I didn't feel in danger. And he's like, you're going to have the wars. Like, just stay fresh for them. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're going to come, but you don't need it now. Sort of thing. So, yeah. But, but honestly, like, isn't the whole point of this game not to have the wars? I mean, I know it translates into more fans and whatnot, but the whole point yeah. is to hit and not get hit, right? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it, there comes a point where you can't do that. Hit and got, not get hit, is, it's not working. Right. And you have to, you know, revert to plan B. Well, when you see a fight like this past weekend, Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, I know you were watching yeah. probably with a, you know, a very keen eye. You see that, you're like, of I want that? You want to fight like that with all those strikes? Or you're like, ah, oh, don't, don't sign me up for that. Uh, that, like, there's something exciting about it. Yeah, definitely. But then I mean, the other side of my brain is like, well, if you can avoid it, avoid it. But then there comes a point where you sort of, you're in that kind of fight and you have to sort of, you have to, you know. Like Max, in and out doesn't really work with someone like Yeah, Rodriguez. So he's so long, he throws so many different weapons and uh, just have to be in. So the only option is stand in there and, and trade. What do you think of Max's performance in that fight? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was kind of everything I thought. Because I, I actually kind of thought, I had a feeling Rodriguez was going to knock him out. Oh. I had a feeling. Wow. Just because just because Holloway always, even how dominant he is, he always gets hit. Yeah. When he fought um, Calvin Cattell, was that the most strikes landed, I think it was? Yeah. But I, I want to see the stat, how many he, he took. Because he still, he still took some big shots in him. And uh, that was a very dominant fight. And he still took shots, you know. So even when he's very dominant, he gets hit. Is that, so considering that, and you're right, uh, he's been hit more, but he's been hit by over a thousand strikes in his career, which is All a right. lot. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, but he's lot. landed three thousand. Um, still. Yeah. And he's had a lot of fights too. Though. He's had a lot he's of a fights. Young guy that's had a lot of fights. Hmm. Can you call yourself the best boxer if you're getting hit that much? I don't know. I, don't, I, I wonder how his his boxing translates into actual boxing. You know, like I wonder how well. Yeah. I think like, Pete Yan's boxing is pretty nice. I don't, again, I don't know how well hits would translate into into boxing. It's a weird one. Are you just saying that because Dustin Poirier said that on Monday? Because he did say that on my show. He he said he thought Peter Yan is the best boxer in the UFC. Now it's the second time this week that someone he doesn't get hit a lot. He does, and he has a really nice guard. Yeah, he, he kind of bo- like he boxes like someone that's wearing uh, eight ounce gloves, you know, right. like where he covers and stuff. So, yeah. Um, what about your boxing? How would you rate it? No, I think it's, it's up there pretty good. I think it's up there with the. I think I think I could box pretty well, boxing, but um, it's not the same in MMA. It's a bit different, isn't it? Well, of course. Yeah, I mean, you have to worry about you know takedowns and knees and elbows, light kick. Yeah, right. It's a totally different sport. I was I was sparring with someone, a uh, pro boxer, a few years ago, and he fought he fought Javonta Davis. And I remember I forget the guy's name. I used from around this way. I used to spar with him, and he would. Like he was a really good boxer, and I'd have a hard time with him. Like maybe, maybe nick around. Like if he was taking a round off, sort of thing. Like I'd do all right with him. And then he fought Javonta, and I think he got knocked out in three rounds. And in my head, I'm thinking that that was going to be a competitive fight because, wow. yeah. you know, that guy he beats me off in sparring. But the level is just so different. So, are you saying that when we see you back sometime in 2022, uh, probably not January, but maybe February or March? We're going to see a different Arnold Allen. Are you saying that we're going to see a more aggressive Arnold Allen, one that goes for the finish? What, what what are we going to see in this uh, <laughs> this return? Uh, I I always thought because everyone I fought up until Sadiq tried to to wrestle me and take me down, so that fight was the one I was like, oh, we're going to have to stand up fight here. I'm not going to have to worry so much about takedowns and I'm going to let my hands go. And then like an idiot, I broke my hand. Uh-huh. I tried to finish him twice and uh, hurt myself. So yeah. How much pain um, you are know, you in? Uh, it's weird. Like in the fight, it doesn't really hurt, but you know something's happening. Right. It gets like hot and kind of puffy feeling. You know what I mean? It just feels hot in that area. Yeah. I can't say that I know what you mean because I've never been in a fight with a broken hand, but I would imagine. I've, breaking, I've broken my ankle once playing basketball, so it's kind of the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I would think. I saw some photos. Someone shared a, uh, something the other day. There was a photo of Montreal basketball and you were in it. And, yeah. Uh, I'm a legend. Yeah. Everyone knows. Yeah, that. yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I'm sure your girlfriend has seen well, you play was. basketball back in the day as well. 
<laughs> yeah, she's a big basketball fan. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, where, where did she grow up in Montreal? Could I ask? Uh, she's in Cote St. Luke. Oh my gosh, that's right where uh, my sister lives, and my wife is from there too. She's oh, really? from Hampstead. You know Hampstead? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's crazy. A lot of Jewish oh. people in Cote St. Luke. Is she Jewish? Your your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your girlfriend? She is. No, they're they're no they're. Oh. Um, Italian, they're, they're like the opposite, Catholic, aren't they? Okay, but I feel like we're all sort of, you know, we're all very similar yeah. in many regards. She says uh, she's an honorary Jew because all her friends are Jewish. So I love it. What high school? Do you know? Yes. Now, we're, now we're getting really into the weeds. Oh, I don't know. I should know. If she's watching, I'm going to be in some crap. Uh, she has told me. I don't know. You can get back to me on that. It's okay. Yeah. Um, you you oh. also recently shared a photo, a great photo of you, uh, after your UFC debut, and I love what you wrote. Uh, you <laughs> you borrowed Luke Barnett's watch for the photo. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. Just because you felt like it was know. appropriate. You wanted to feel like a big shot. Here you are. We're showing the photo. I think that's Pacer with you as well, right? You look so young. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I basically the per DM I got for the fights. You know, like when you go, that they give you money for the day you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they gave me the money, and it was more money. Then I'd been paid previously to fight, and I never really crazy. had that much. <laughs> I never really had that much money before, and I remember just walking around Berlin, and I was like, "We're in Germany," so I was like, oh, "I'm gonna buy something." So I was like, "Hugo Boss." So I went into the Hugo Boss shop. I bought a shirt and like these baby blue trousers, which I would never wear. I wore them that night and that night only, and uh, yeah. And then I was like, "Luke was like, you need a watch," so I had a flash watch on that I borrowed off a friend. And uh, I'm just like, what am I doing wearing this shirt and this stupid trousers? Yeah. You look cool. And, uh, that's a waste of money. I don't know. I still got the shirt and trousers hanging up, but like, I never wore them since. And you took the watch just to complete the look? Yeah, literally. It was hanging off my wrist as well because obviously Luke's not a big guy. So, yeah. Um, Luke's a bit stupid, really. So your last fight before the UFC, how much did you get paid for that? A couple hundred? I think. Yeah, I think it was like seven hundred pounds. I think it was. Wow. Cash though, Cash straight <laughs> up, no taxes. Yeah, no. <laughs> In a gym bag. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just a little envelope. Okay. Yeah, yeah I guess seven hundred. You don't need the uh, the gym bag. For but that. it's like um, everyone was on ticket deals and stuff. I don't know how it works like over in the US and stuff, but every, everything was like ticket deals. But I like, I never had tickets from like. From pretty young, I was training all the time, so I didn't really have too many friends that were going to... I have, like, a loyal group of friends about... I could probably count about four or five of them that will come to every fight. Uh huh. But I saw some people, they would be training, they would be out all the time. They'd sell, like, 100 tickets. Like, oh, these friends and stuff. I was at an event the other day. There was amateur guys having their first, second fight. They had hundreds of fans. I was like, I was like I've never sold this many tickets. I don't even think I'd sell this many now. Come on, Arnold. We got we to gotta feel a little better about ourselves here. I feel like confidence is low right now. <laughs> nah, it's not. Just, uh, That's part of your I charm. I was just shocked at how many. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's your beef with Joe Biden? Joe Biden? Yeah. I don't beef with Joe Biden. <laughs> I see you, oh, t- I- you tweeting. <laughs> I'm looking at my, my feed, and I always wonder about the people who tweet to someone who you, you know yeah. is not going to respond to you, right? It's either like <laughs> a generic account or it's a guy like Joe Biden, the president of the United States, and they like tweet yeah. complaints or something. And you, what did you tweet to Joe Biden? I should, I should have had the tweet up. You tweeted, and I couldn't stop laughing at this tweet. Because there's no way oh, he's going to respond. Because I, I, I ship my, because because I'm home for a while, I ship my bike back from Canada. So I have I have like a nice mountain bike I bought in Canada. Okay. And I shipped it back to the UK because I want to use it just for like fitness or whatever while I'm back. And uh, I saw he posted about UPS. There's something about a meeting with UPS or something. Yes. And I was just wondering. I wanted to know why it was so expensive to ship my bike back. Because I paid crazy. Well. My girlfriend's mom helped me, and I paid crazy duties on it this side. I thought, why is it so expensive? And I saw his tweet, and it was like perfect timing. So right. to, he hasn't replied yet, though. No, he hasn't replied. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy or something. I, I tried to amplify it a little bit. Did you get any kind of reply from anyone? I retweeted it. No. Oh, did you? Thank yeah, you. I did. No, nothing. <laughs> no, okay. I got nothing. Uh, Not even the help from Arrow Hawaii. Maybe yeah. maybe the heel one he would have got it. Uh, that's right. That's right. By the way, I think 
uh, if memory serves, I think he was talking about the USPS, the United States Postal Service, not UPS, two different entities. Oh, then, oh yeah, probably. Okay. Just my so. bad then. <laughs> yeah. I retract my statement about Joe Biden. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It, it really cracked me up. All right. So um, in conclusion, the hand is feeling better. It's getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Uh, getting mm. frustrated, losing patience, or we're okay. I, I'm I'm just so used to it. I'm uh, I'm just I accept it. You know, what I mean, oh. you can only if you can't control things. All I can control is being fit and training. And like I, I haven't I haven't missed. It. Well, actually, that's a lie. I missed two weeks of training when I was in the cast, but um, I haven't missed any training really. I, I've I've done this before. Like I had hand injuries. I've sparred one hand. I've been sparring one handed. So. I'll just think of a way to, you know, improve my kicks or improve something or work on my fitness, be fitter. You know, just, there's always something you can do, whatever obstacle you got. Okay. Um, so you have this situation where you hope that the hand is going to get better soon. You're hoping to return probably in the first quarter of 2022. You want a big fight. Is yeah. there anyone on the radar? Is there, is there a perfect, is it zombies? Is it someone else? Yeah. Uh, a few people suggested zombie, and I and I really like the idea of that fight. Um, I'm a I grew up being a massive fan of Korean zombies, so it would be it would be really cool to fight someone like that. And I think that's the kind of fight you know he's going to stand. He, he's called the zombie for a reason. He stand the trade, so it would be a good fight for me to sort of show what I can do. Okay, all right, I like it, and that could be the one that gets. I mean, it's eight in a row, right? Yeah. We need to start talking about you as one of the top dogs. Enough of these guys are on two fight yeah. winning streak. I mean, enough is enough. Do you need me to? Do you need me to start banging the drum? I've done great things for Leon Edwards. I hope you know. And uh, look at him now. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot for him. I feel like I should get a cut of his next purse. If I'm being honest. What did you tell him to do? Well, no, I'm here banging the drum on his behalf. Meanwhile, he stabs <laughs> me in the back and doesn't come on my show. You know, there's a lot of ingrates oh, uh, in this business. Is that why you got Jorge on? That's why I got Jorge on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Listen. Nice move. If people want to stab me in the back, I'll stab them in the back. <laughs> All nice. right. Uh, but listen, I'm going to start banging the drum. We need, we need, yeah, noted. Uh, we need to start talking about you among the the top guys. It's probably going to be Volkanovski Holloway next, but I don't, I feel yeah, like sure. if, if things go well, I feel like by the end of next year, you should be in that discussion. Yeah. Uh, I've I've written down my goals and my my targets and all that stuff, so you know we're still in track for those and all that. Even with all the setbacks I've had, okay, in my UFC career and waiting and whatnot. So yeah, looks well, good. Well, Can we get an Ipswich Town thing in the back there somewhere? Yeah, um, that's that's your club. Yeah, I'm an Everton. Guy. I don't know if you know like the league. Of course, I, I know about Ipswich. They're blue. Ipswich are blue. Yeah, you what? Well, you're trying to buy my allegiance? No, nah, well, they're a different league. What the are they? League one. So, the league one. That's the one before yeah. Premier League, right? No, no, no. There's uh, Premier League Championship. Oh God. Then League One. That's your squad. Yeah. yeah. I thought your squad was Man U because of uh, Trafford. No, we didn't name him. We didn't name him. Oh, who named him? Uh, some some people that were trying to put him down. So we uh, we rescued him. <laughs> Wait, some people were trying to put him down like all those years ago. Yeah. So. Basically, how we got him, someone wanted to put him down. We had a dog that died. So, like with the staffies, they're kind of like they got the same kind of reputation as pit bulls. Okay, it's kind of similar dog. So uh, we've always had them in our family. And never had like a nasty one or anything. So everyone offers us basically these dogs. Anyone that can't have it or whatever, they offer us. They they offer us the dog. Like, oh, do you want to take this? I know you like looking after him, whatever. Huh. And uh, basically, he was a bit too crazy. Like not in a, a mean way, just too too much energy, and uh, people that had him were going to put him down. And a family member knew we liked it, so yeah, we took him. We took him on board. Man, you're great people. The Allens mm. are great people. I know your dad is, uh, you know, a little hard on you. I know your mom likes to get into fights at your fights, right? <laughs> You've learned about that. <laughs> yeah, she's probably calmed down a little bit now. I would imagine. <laughs> no, uh, uh, they're they're in quarantine, isn't it? They're COVID, so I had to go. Um, I have to, I'm doing their groceries from today, so they have to be nice to me. Oh, they got COVID? Yeah, yeah. I'm oh. sick, so. Recently? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, yes. What's the day? Wednesday, maybe Monday, I think. Oh, mm. no. How are they feeling? 
I spoke to my dad on the phone. I think he's <laughs> he's trying to get me to buy things for him around town, and like he was he was trying to do deals on. He's on Facebook, on Facebook Marketplace, trying to do deals with like trading weights. Oh. He's like, oh, this guy in this town has got these weights. Can you go pick them up? I said, I'm not going to go drive and pick some weights. It's like, you don't need weights. So you have hundreds of kilos of weights in the guy. He's like, oh, no, but he's selling them real cheap. I need more. I said, like, no, I'm not going to go trade weights for you. Oh, my gosh. He's taking advantage yeah. of the situation. He me, yeah, he wanted me to pick up his weights to trade for this guy that had more weights and I was like oh, what do you want me to do <laughs> yeah how's your mother feeling yeah she's fine they're both fine I did there uh, I just went and did some shopping for dropped off on the door oh wow but they're all good okay that's why you're in the car it all comes full circle yeah but they uh, so I want to go see my dog and I uh, obviously he's in the quarantine prison with him oh no let him out. and I can't see apparently I can't see the dog because they could give it to the dog too. I don't know. Is that no, true? that's not true. That's what my girlfriend said. She said, no, you can't go. Because my mom was like, oh, I'll let the dog out the garden. You can come around the back and see him. I was like, oh, cool. My girlfriend's like, no, no, you can't stroke the dog. What? I don't I'll know. I'll my dog. I've, 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 that must have been really hard for you. Did the dog see you? Yeah, my dad held him up for the Oh, come so. on. Poor Trafford. Poor yeah. guy. He must be so but sad. Yeah, they're, they're all good. I heard that dogs don't get COVID, or I think there's like one or two cases, but they can't pass it along. Yeah. I heard something about cats. I heard a cat got COVID or something. Really? Hmm. I've never been much of a cat person, so. You know. No, my, my missus is. But, um, oh, jeez. I got I got scratched by a cat when I was a kid. I got a little scar. I don't know if you can see it. But a little wow. scar down here. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, cut me. Cut me. So I've always sort of been a bit, yeah. bit dubious of cats. Ever since then, yeah. you swore off the cats. <laughs> yeah, and it just turned out it was hungry. We were standing at my mum's friend's place, and the, I went, uh, the cat just attacked me, and it wanted to feed him. I was like, what? Yeah. Well, I feel like we've covered a lot here, Alan uh, Arnold. This has been <laughs> – we've covered all the bases, uh, the cats, the dogs, uh -huh. the training. Uh, I'm actually kind of <laughs> bummed. That, you know, we ended this on a sour note uh, about your parents. Oh, sour. Well, you know, your parents getting COVID, that's a bummer. Nah, they're all good. My, my dad, he says it's another week off work, so it's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> He's happy. He's fine. <laughs> Your dad is a classic character, man. I'd love to meet him one day. Yeah. Um, I'd yeah. love to have him on the yeah, show definitely, definitely. one day. Get him in the studio. The, the only thing is, he does, I'm not like, he's one of these, he's turning into one of these people uh -oh. that are like, oh, everything's now like PC culture and all that. You can't say this, you can't say oh, that. No. I'm like, yeah, but with reason you can't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. one of those. We yeah. argue a lot about it. Cancel culture, it's getting too much, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most of these things are offensive and it's probably better that we don't say these things, right? You should see the conversations with, with him and Perez like, oh, talking God. about this. It's just like, like, dad, stop, please. Whose side is Perez like, on? Yeah. No, not like no one's. Is there just <laughs> them just talking? It's just like what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Oh my! All right. Well, I wish you the best, Arnold. Uh, get well soon. You, I hope to see you back very soon. Well, I'm not sick. Well, no, I mean like the hand. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and let's go title shot 2022. This time next year, you have either fought for the belt or you're about to fight for the belt. How about that? Is that the goal? Is that what we have written down? Uh, it's close. Yeah. It's oh. pretty close. What is, what well, is that the, sounds good too. What is the actual goal? 2023? Yeah, something like that. Okay. I have to check. I, don't, I literally, so in my wallet, oh. <laughs> I have, I'm not going to look at it. Okay. I have like my goals. Oh my here. gosh. And I haven't looked at it for quite a while. Why? I don't know. I just, so there was a thing I wrote years ago and I just sort of left it in my wallet. But why not look at it to remind yourself? Because it's in there. Okay, you know it's there. Yeah. So you wrote that and you cut it up, you laminated it, and you put it in your wallet. No, it's not laminated. It's just on a bit of, okay. bit of paper. And uh, mm. pre-UFC, during UFC, like when did you do this? Uh, I redid it when I got to the UFC. Wow. Because that was one of my goals. Yeah. I love that. Who mm. told you to do that? Yeah, because I, I was... Luke Barnett, actually, he told me to write my stuff down. So I did it. And my plan, so if I didn't, my UFC debut, I wrote it down like I was going to get this guy on this, not this guy, but like I was going to get this date uh, when I was this age, whatever. And if I didn't sign to the UFC when I was 21, 
my plan was to get back and get a job and sort of train part time. So I was gonna I was gonna go back to work. So I was like, I don't want to be 21 and sort of still hiding in the train toilets trying to get a free ride because I ain't got the money, sort of thing. Right. And so, yeah. and you made it. Yes. Well, it's working out. I'm still driving a piece of crap BMW from '98, but I love it. Come on. To be fair, it's yours. Yeah. It's clapped. That's what everyone says on the forum. It's clapped. What does clap mean? <laughs> it's, it's messed up. Okay. Well, it's a BMW, so how bad could it be? <laughs> 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 this is amazing. Arnold, you're the man. Uh, never change, Thanks, my man. friend. You, you, listen, when you become champion one day, don't change on us, mm. all right? Don't become one of those guys. Uh, who you know what I mean? Still what? tweet Joe Biden. You just tell it. If he's still Start wearing uh, fancy robes and stuff. And yeah, some fancy jewelry. Versace robes and all that. Everyone's doing it. <laughs> I get some cars from the 2000s, maybe. I have I have a Jeep in Canva. It's 90, 99. It's rust into pieces. I've got this is 98, which needs... I keep getting project cars, but then I haven't got time to actually do the project. So. Well, maybe you now have some time off. I mean, we're starting to approach the end of the time off, but... Uh... Yeah. Nah, it's just, it's just cost too much, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fixing cars. It's a bad hobby. Uh, well, good luck with the BMW. Good luck with the hand, with the Jeep, with everything you got going on. I hope you get the bike soon. I uh, hope your parents Thank feel you. better. I hope your hand feels better. I hope Trafford is doing well. And uh, my, best you, good. my best to you and the family. And uh, hopefully we see you back in there soon. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me up. Yeah, pleasure. Anytime. I'm doing good. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, Arnold Allen. What a character. Love talking to Arnold Allen.